To say that Google Stadia has been struggling since its launch would be an understatement. Despite Google's big claims about the service's potential, big industry names they signed on for the initial push, not to mention the obnoxiously big marketing campaign during its initial launch window, Stadia never really gained any traction. How is it possible that one of the biggest, richest tech companies couldn't even make a dent in the gaming market, where software and live services, Google's bread and butter, are quickly becoming central to so many aspects of the market? The problem really stems from what Stadia offered. Cloud gaming has been attempted by many companies in different forms in the past, from early attempts like OnLive back in 2009, to current offerings like xCloud from Microsoft and PlayStation Now from Sony, and future projects like Steam's Cloud Play. The concept seems great. Let all the actual processing that runs your games be done remotely on the company's servers, then have them stream that game to whatever machine you happen to own. The benefits are numerous. From not having to buy any expensive, high-powered components or a dedicated gaming box to never having to worry about upgrading those items because all of that is being handled by the service provider. Your cheap $200 Chromebook could theoretically game with the same performance as a tricked-out $4,000 high-performance DIY PC. But even if we ignore the fact that many gamers like building and tinkering with their own hardware, the fact of the matter is that cloud gaming has never really been able to live up to the promise. Unlike movies and music, where streaming has long become the standard for engaging with that type of content, video games are an interactive medium. And one of the most important elements to making a game feel good to play is minimizing input lag. Input lag is the small inevitable delay between a player pressing a button on their controller or mouse, their input device, and the game reacting to that input. Some amount of input lag is inevitable, whether from the actual signal traveling from the input device and being registered by the machine, to the display updating the image to reflect the button press. But these delays are so small that they're barely perceptible to our senses, so the action in game still feels instantaneous. This is especially important in online competitive games where milliseconds can change everything. Unfortunately, streaming a game from the cloud introduces a fair bit more input lag than any other source that was mentioned above. Because now, instead of the input going from your input device to your console to the display, it now has to go from your input to the console to a server on the internet, be computed by the game, then sent back over the internet to your device and then be drawn on your screen. This makes competitive games essentially unplayable and even casual games uncomfortable, if not properly addressed. No game streaming service before has found an adequate way to truly address the issue. Stadia promised to be different. Well, it wasn't. When comparing Stadia's input to a local PC, some tests measured over double the amount of input lag compared to running the game natively, and those numbers were under ideal conditions. A home user's internet would routinely be worse, with performance and visual quality fluctuating depending on the state of the connection. Which leads us to another issue with the promise of Stadia, visual quality. Leading up to launch, Stadia promised a fantastic visual experience, with Google being able to link individual nodes together to provide a more powerful host system that enabled gaming experiences unlike anything that could be provided by a home console or single local PC. Unfortunately, these features never materialized in a game actually provided by the service, and the games that were there tended to look worse than they would on a traditional PC or console. This is because of two main issues. First is compression. Since the games on Stadia aren't being rendered locally on your machine, Stadia is sending a video stream of the game over the internet, and that stream, in order to function, needs to be compressed. Compression invariably leads to a reduction in image quality, and the worse your internet connection gets, the lower the quality of the stream in an effort to combat the aforementioned input lag problem. So no matter how powerful the machines at Google were that were rendering the games, it was basically impossible to actually see that full quality as an end user due to the inevitability of compression. The final visual issue was frame rate. Stadia offered a free 1080p 60fps plan as well as a paid 4K 60fps subscription option. While 1080p and 4K are fine resolution targets, one of the biggest trends in gaming today is high frame rate gaming. Monitors that can run anywhere from 120Hz all the way to an eye blistering 480Hz are quickly supplanting the until recent standard 60Hz refresh rate. And if you have a display capable of high refresh rate, the last thing you want to do is hinder it by using a service that is only capable of up to 60 frames per second. 
Now, all these issues mentioned so far are unfortunate, but they aren't impossible to overcome. Stadia isn't hardware, it's a service, and services naturally improve over time. High refresh rate streaming could be added, input lag could be reduced. If any company is in a position to leverage AI to improve compression algorithms, it's Google. But Stadia crashed and burned almost immediately on arrival. It never had a chance. The biggest problem with Stadia was its business model. It's actually kind of stunning that Stadia, with all of its industry talent involved, ever thought that what they were pitching would actually catch on. The distribution model of Stadia is so baffling, so disconnected from the current consumer expectation that it's laughable it was launched in the way it was. Stadia is a streaming service, but it is not a subscription service. Stadia's solution to playing games was streaming. Just like instead of downloading a movie or album, you just stream them from Netflix or Spotify, Stadia wanted to do the same thing with games. No downloading or worrying about system requirements for the game, just click the icon and you're playing. The problem was that inherent to Netflix and Spotify's success is that their business revolved around paying for access. Since you were streaming the media instead of downloading it locally, they didn't make you buy the individual things you were using their service for. You instead pay a monthly fee to access their entire catalog. That access is revoked if you stop paying, so it incentivizes continuing to give the company money indefinitely. This is like the foundational concept of a subscription service. Stadia instead wanted its users to buy the games for the same price you would pay if you bought them locally on Steam or at a store for your console. But instead of owning that physical copy or having the data available locally on your hard drive to use whenever you wanted, you had to still stream the game from Google servers. No offline play, no tangible ownership. And if you wanted to play at 4K, $10 a month on top of it. It was the worst of both worlds. This was really the death knell of Stadia. A Google-powered game streaming service could have done amazingly well for them, a fact that Xbox Game Pass's resounding success seems to have all but confirmed. Gamers are more than willing to pay a monthly fee for access to a huge library of games, and they're also willing to pay full price for a digital download. They aren't, apparently, willing to pay full price to merely rent a game on a streaming platform, especially one owned by a company prone to quickly shuttering projects that don't perform as expected, which Google has a long history of. It wouldn't take long for Google to prove this concern valid, as just over a year after the launch of Stadia, Google shut down its in-house game development studio, abandoning its endeavors to create first-party games for its platform. While Google stated publicly that it wanted to focus on Stadia as a platform to host third-party games, it's hard not to look at the move as a tacit admission that Stadia is buckling. With very little in terms of exclusives, timed exclusives, or even much of a library in general to convince gamers to give the service a shot, an in-house development team seemed to be what Stadia needed to create some incentive to justify its existence. With a questionable business model, a floundering support system from its parent company, and an uncertain future, it's hard to see Stadia gaining any ground going forward, especially as its competition builds out similar services tied to stronger brands and better value.